Well, hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to Agri-Food Conversations, brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is David. I'm a principal here on the iSelect Fund investment team, and I'm excited to welcome you to our discussion and presentation today. Uh, Agri-Food Conversations, uh, as many of you may know, is all about driving innovation in agriculture. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, uh, this month's theme being applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning in ag. Um, on today's call, we're joined by Anna Haldewang, founder and CEO of Insight Track. Insight Track provides robotic mummy removal technology and orchard data to help growers better manage and optimize their profit per tree. Its technology finds and removes mummies uh, with machine learning and site tracking technology while providing real time orchard insights to improve the health and yield of your next harvest season. Now, each of you knows that companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you're some of the smartest, most talented people in Inside Tracks market. You're potential customers for Inside Tracks products and services. You have built a company similar to Inside Tracks, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Inside Track may face. Now, before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a few seconds to answer. Um, and a few process comments while that is going. Um, we are not soliciting investment. This presentation is providing information to help Insight Track find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Um, since we're not, since this is a recording, um, there won't be any Q&A opportunities here. However, we will provide an opportunity for you to follow up with Anna should you have any questions. Um, I will fill in for the Q&A today. And finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Anna Haldewang, founder and CEO of Insight Track. Anna, we're all eyes and ears. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me today. Hello, everyone. I'm I'm happy to be here, and I'm I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about Insight Track and what we're developing. Now, as David mentioned, we're inventing a robot that is removing mummies. Now, what in the world is mummy? And we're not talking about Egyptian times. And David, before our call, mentioned that he's never heard of a mummy before. Uh, this presentation. So this is this is a whole new world and uh, I'm excited to explain a bit more about that. So we have a focus on the almond industry in California and Australia. And during the almond harvest, not every almond is ready to come off the tree during that time. So then the, in the winter, when the leaves fall off the trees, those leftover almonds, they turn rotten and black and they're called mummies. And now there's, there's this pest called navel orange worm, and it is the number one pest problem for almond growers. So it'll burrow inside of these mummies in the winter time and hibernate. And then in the spring, it emerges into a moth and it damages the quality and the yield of next year's crop. And so this is a huge problem for growers and customer and processors as this greatly decreases the uh, cost per pound for, for the grower. And so in order to minimize that, the Almond Board of California has set a standard that there be two or less mummies per tree in order to have the best start to the crop year. Now, the current methods for this rely on shakers. They're harvesters that they use during the fall. They'll come back through in the wintertime and they'll shake the bottoms of the trunks for a few seconds, and those mummies will drop. However, this only works during a fog or after a rain when mummies are heavy. A grower can't come in with the shaker on a bright, sunshiny afternoon day. They're just not coming off the tree, so they have to rely on wet weather to get the job done, which isn't reliable at all. And as a last resort, they'll come in, they'll hire uh, labor contractors to come in with 15 foot bamboo sticks and they will hit and they will poke each of these mummies out of the tree. So as you can imagine, it's pretty costly, it's backbreaking work and nobody wants to do it. So with this in mind, we, with, the, with the problems of, well, we need to invent something that doesn't rely on wet weather or manual labor to reach that standard of two or less mummies per tree. And so we've invented Insight Track. An Insight Track is a ground robot that's built on track so we can go through any type of muddy terrain or hilly terrain. We can operate rain or shine. And how we remove those mummies from the trees is when we came out, we, we trialed out so many different types of prototypes. We took out say for example, a limb shaker that individually shook each limb. We took out, we tried air jets and that just shifted around the mummy. We tried a water jet that really only worked for a few, few feet. 
And we also tried an airsoft gun. And surprisingly enough, an airsoft gun was the most effective at removing those mummies from the trees. And that's what served as our inspiration for what we have today. So this rover will roll down the middle of the row and it'll target and it'll identify those mummies in the trees and then remove each mummy in under a second. And we have lights on the side of the rover. And so we're able to operate 24 seven, even during the night. And so we're accurate up to 30 feet. And uh, so we can get, we can reach up higher into the trees for those older trees. Um, we are battery operated. So we have a few batteries on board. And then when those batteries run low, we then have a generator that kicks on and it'll run for about 40 minutes. And then once those batteries are fully charged, the generator will then shut off. And we are uh, fully autonomous. So we have GPS and LIDAR on, board, LIDAR on board. So we can navigate around obstacles and a grower will need to set up a pre-planned route before the rover goes out into the orchard and uh, begins its project. And so here is a video we took at the World Ex Ag Expo this past February out in Tulare, California. And so this was really fun for us because every time we were moving mummies from the trees, it was like a whole new group of people that were coming in and just, it was like a magnet to the booth and just wanted to see this thing in action. So it's awfully satisfying when it's shooting at the mummies to hear that little click sound and see those mummies explode in the trees. And the rule of thumb is essentially the more stops it makes, the more accurate it is. Because you could have a mummy on one side of the branch, and then if it shifts forward or shifts forward, it will then see that mummy on the other side. But a grower can customize it according to how many mummies they want removed. So they can have the rover stop every three feet, five feet, or 10 feet. And the rover is trained through machine learning. So through thousands and thousands of images, we've been able to train it to identify what a mummy is and what it isn't. So once it rolls forward and stops in front of a section of a tree, it'll capture an image and it maps out the fast and the quickest route to all those mummies in a matter of seconds. And once, once it identifies all those mummies in, in its mapped route, it then removes each mummy in under one second, as you're seeing here. And the rover that we're presenting at the expo this past February was rover 2.0, which I'll show you in a second. We're about to finish up this demo here. And this is Rover 3.0. And Rover 3.0 is currently in development. Nothing on the bottom changes. Uh, that's extremely robust. I mean, the whole system is extremely robust. And uh, so we're built to be in the orchard 365 days a year, performing a different role every single season, which is what we're designed to do over time. And right now we're just focused on winter sanitation. So when a grower is purchasing a unit, what they're purchasing is the base hardware components for things that could be added on in the future. Like we could be towing things, we could be, uh, they could purchase small hardware components later on, but majority of it is going to be software updates. Um, and as you can see from the top, that's the huge design change that is coming into play for the first delivery of these units that will be delivered to California in Q4 of this year. Now, we've always kind of had that plan where in the development stage, you never want to add on more than take on more than you can chew, really. So which is why in the past video, you only saw two turrets but we've always had this plan that we would add more turrets on in order to double the speed of the machine. And we've also taken the cameras off of those turrets and we've uh, pl planted them straight onto the rover, which has allowed the turrets to move more freely and quickly. And therefore we have increased, we have doubled our efficiency and speed in the process. And in the front, you'll also see that uh, we have stoppers on there, so if it were to hit anything, it would immediately shut off. And all this can be run through an iPad. And these are our pellets. They're fully biodegradable, safe for the soil. They're a derivative of cornstarch, and uh, they'll be able to degrade over two to three years' time.
So while we're targeting and removing mummies from the trees, we're collecting valuable data about every tree, every variety, and every acre in the orchard. So in the end, we'll be able to present the grower with a heat map, and we'll be able to show them where they were heaviest in the orchard with mummies, where they were lightest, how many mummies in total we removed. And over time, the grower is able to uh, be able to find answers within this data. You know, maybe for example, in one section of the orchard where they're always getting mummies the heaviest, maybe they go in during harvest and they shake that area twice. Or maybe there was a lack of water that year, which also could, could lead to an increase in mummies. So this data over time is going to be able to provide the grower with further answer, answers and insight into their orchard. So at Insight Track, we take the guesswork out of removing navel orange worm from the trees by destroying one mummy at a time. We're pushing boundaries in technology and AI and advancing the grower into the new age of robotics by destroying one mummy at a time. Thank you. Amazing. I learned so much. Uh, mummies and airsoft guns. Uh, you're cool. never going to look at your almond milk again. You're, it's true. Not never the same way. Got a story um, to tell. So what do you shoot at the mummies? So we're shooting biodegradable pellets at the mummies. Okay. And, and those are just made of, I mean, are, are those something that you can just buy off the shelf or like to, to like get those manufactured somewhere? Yeah. So we've partnered with a vendor and so growers will come to us and through a subscription plan, they'll receive a new round of pellets every single year. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I was curious as I was watching, watching it move through the field, um, is, is the navigation basically a pre-programmed navigation? So like I'm a farmer, I've basically got a GPS, like I've got, I obviously have a map of my field and I pre-programmed the navigation and the robot simply goes down, can identify what a tree is basically, shoots the mummies that it sees and then continues in that path. Right, so before the, it, and it depends, if the, if the block doesn't have service at all, you can plan all this out on your iPad beforehand in the office, but you'll map out the route beforehand. Um, and, and so say for example, you have a light load of inf infestation, you don't, and you don't wanna go down every single row, you can choose to skip a row if you'd like. Um, and so that's, it's all operated through the, your computer or your iPad. Um, so you'll be able to monitor the, 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 the diesel uh, levels, the, how the batteries are, are operating, um, how many mummies it's removing, um, when the floodlights are coming on, yeah. when it's shipped over that night mode, all of that is through, um, in, that information is on the iPad. Gotcha, interesting. Um, so for current mummy removal practice, just go back to sort of what this best prep, what the current standard is, are they, is it mostly human labor rem manual removal or do they shake trees or what's the current method? So the current method is, is that they, sh they shake the trees. That is the current standard. And then, but the issue with that is that it relies on wet weather to remove those mummies from the trees. And you can't count on that. And then as a last resort, people have to, the growers have to bring in, in hand pullers with 15 foot bamboo sticks and they hit and they poke these mummies out of the tree. And yeah. I've done that work, David, and it is not fun. No. I, I do not recommend it. Um, it's backbreaking. So, uh, which is why we've invented something that, that helps with that. Um, because growers are struggling to find people to come in and do the job. Yeah. I mean, the labor piece for sure. And if, I mean, do you have, do you have a sense of how much, how much more clearance you get compared to standard shaking uh, methodologies? Yeah. So we are accurate up to 30 feet and a bamboo stick is 15 feet. So we're able to reach those mummies that are that are higher up in those older trees. Yeah, okay. And how, so over time, you'll have more and more data for farmers in terms of the impacts on their yield year over year by bringing automation into a better job of more effectively clearing mummies from their trees. Do you have any sense today of what you would sort of characterize as the agronomic value of, of reducing mummies in this way? Is it a savings on labor cost? Is it an improvement in productivity? Is it a reduction of the need to use like pesticides that might be used based on pests that get into the mummies? What's like, the, how do you guys think about characterizing that ROI for a grower? 
Yeah, it's it's a combination of all of those things. Um, and and with the and while we're doing tests now with um, we have we have test trials lined up with um, doing some in Australia and California to further verify our units, um, even for example, like how many sprays can we replace with this? And we're not also saying that we're the end all be all as well. Um, there's definitely areas where where you where you will need to spray if your infestation rate is extremely bad that year. But the foundation of of reducing naval orange worm is winter sanitation. You they're not flying around. They're they are they are in your control because they're hibernating inside of those mummies. Right. It's your time to go destroy them in the trees. And so not only with that, but then okay, well, what's the cost savings? Um, so a grower can save anywhere from a hundred to three hundred dollars, over three hundred dollars per acre with by removing by going down to two or less mummies per tree. It really does vary though, according to grower, um, because each of them has a different infestation rate. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's how are you guys selling this? I mean, you're selling equipment, you're selling services, combination of both. Yeah, so we're we're selling the units directly to growers. We also have some custom harvesters as well who have purchased the units. And so they will be servicing growers in California and Australia. And the in the main in the in the spectrum of crops, you guys can cover all tree nuts, just almonds, a set of tree nuts. What's the what's the range? Yeah, so right now we're just focused on almonds and then we will shift over to other tree nuts who have the exact same problem with mummies and the orange worm. Um, and then that's like our short putt. And then we'll expand into other crops in seasons. Uh, because as I said, during my presentation, this rover is extremely robust. It's built to be in the orchard 365 days a year. We just happen to be focused on winter sanitation at this time. Gotcha. Um, might sound like a silly question, but um, how much, how much variance is there in terms of how strongly a mummy holds onto a tree, right? So you've got some sort of pre-programmed velocity at which you're shooting these biodegradable pellets into mummies, like, you know, from one farmer's land to another, different trees, different climates, et cetera. Do you run into any instances where you've got this thing like shooting away at a mummy and it just like takes two shots, three shots, it's hit it and it thinks it's down and it keeps moving on. Like any like technical issues you guys run into on that front? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So, and they're called stick types, by the way, when they just <laughs> like, glued Mummies on and stick tree. types. <laughs> and so, so say for example, that's great. So um, when we capture an image and we shoot at the mummy in the tree, and the, the rover will then capture another image to verify that it removed that mummy. And if it didn't, it will, you can then put like a stopper on it, say, I want you to shoot it two or three more times. And if you don't get it off, mark it down and move on. So right. we're collecting that data as well as to, you know, what, what's your stick type situation looking like in, in the, the orchard. Um, and I will say that, that we do a pretty good job at, at removing those stick types as well that mm -hmm. uh, current methods struggle to get off. Yeah, awesome. Um, well, Anna, the last thing I'd like to ask you, um, what can the audience do to help you the most? Um, and where you, got, where are you guys in need and, and how can they reach you? Yeah, so you can reach us at info at insighttrack.com. Uh, you can check out our website and then we're on all the social media channels as well. Um, and I appreciate the question of asking how, how the audience can help. Uh, we are looking for strategic partners to grow and scale this product. And uh, we're looking for advice and funding and loans. And we are also hiring right now. So we are looking for a software engineer and product development engineer to join the team. Amazing, amazing. Well, Anna, thank you so much for your time today. Um, really, really exciting work. I know I learned a lot. I hope anybody listening also learned a lot about mummies and um, what was it, was stick? What was it, what was the other one? Stick types. Stick types. Um, uh, for anybody listening on recording, thank you uh, for your participation. Um, for anybody who's new, uh, we host Agri-Food Conversations every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central Time. Um, if you want to share this with a friend, um, we welcome you to do so. A replay, a replay will be emailed to you in the next 24 hours, and new viewers can register for Agri-Food Conversations by going to agrifoodconversations.com. 
Um, if you'd like to learn more, um, join us next week as we continue our month on AI and machine learning and agriculture. Um, we'll be joined by a small robot company um, who are developing sustainable farming robots to make farming more efficient, sustainable, and productive. Thank you, Anna. Appreciate your time. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you for having me. Bye.